Tony Adler from News Corp Australia. Um, Stuart Broad said he's been analysing your tactics and he's looking forward to bowling against you the most. Do you have a strategy this year to, to prepare for him? Uh, well, I haven't really uh, worked on that yet. I'm concentrating on the World Test Championship final first. Yeah. So, uh, Mohammed Shami and Siraj and uh, Shadul Thakur is probably on my mind first. Yeah. Um, that's what's uh, important to us right now and then. And then I'll switch on and, and worry about Stuart Broad if, uh, if they select him first test this time. Yeah, okay. Are you confident about um, uh, this year's um, series? Uh, the World Test Championship yeah. final? Yeah, yeah, look, we've obviously played some outstanding cricket the last 18 to 24 months and we know what um, India's going to bring to the table and, uh, you know, it's 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 great neutral venue. Um, two world-class bowling attacks with a Duke ball. Yeah. Um, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, and from a batter's perspective, I can't wait to get out there. Yeah, okay. Dave, how's your, um, how's your arm? It's like yeah. you might have got the little knock <laughs> Yeah, it was sore. It, it got me right on the same point, but um, yeah, from a different sort of angle, which is which is all right. But yeah, just went went numb and yeah, had to get it strapped. And then yeah, no, it's fine now. It's a little bit sore, but uh, yeah, lucky it didn't hit on top. That's the same point as the, the India one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I'm no doctor, but um, <laughs> the last one hit from above. So I don't know, hit hit from above and uh, had a hairline fracture. This time it's just a, a straight blow onto the corner of the elbow, which is quite sore. So it's kind of been giving you problems, you know, since since then, or is it just the kind of thing that flares up? No, 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 not at all. It was um, it's just one of those things. If you get if you get hit, you get hit. Can't do anything about it. Uh, David, uh, you've played a lot of big finals, World Cup finals, IPL finals, and all that. Just the WTC final itself. It's it's a one-off game. It doesn't. It's not at the end of a long series. So, so how different is it than just the whole makeup? Of it? Oh, look, I think it's great. Um, you know, I, I have been. I won't say critical, but I do think it should be at least a three-game series, I think, with test cricket only. Uh, I think it's, you know, you, you play two years of good cricket and then you play on a neutral venue against an opposition um, that has, or we've all played here before, but not against the same nation. So, look, I, I think it's great. Uh, it's a great reward for the two best teams. Um, you know, and, and as I just said before, you've got two world-class bowling attacks, bowling of a Duke ball uh, on foreign, foreign land. So it's, it's great um, and we're excited for that. I haven't seen. I saw his figures. Um, I'd like to see the dismissals. Um, but yeah, look for for from that perspective, you know, it's five test matches, all five, you know, all five tests for any bowler, even our our camp as well. It's going to be tough to keep backing up. Um, you know, different. You know, they got different speeds as well. That you know, Woody's there as well. Um, you know, how they're going to use him. Big miss for them is obviously Jofra, uh, who they can mix with both of those guys as well. So, you know, each each team has that aggressor um, and that's what you, you know, you strengthen your bowling unit on. So from their perspective, they've got their own headaches with their selections. Um, you know, and for, for us, it's just worrying about, you know, sort of the new guys that we haven't faced over here, haven't faced Ollie Robinson in these conditions. Uh, Potsy's obviously bowling well and, and um, Tongue as well. He's he's a debutant. So, you know these guys we haven't faced before. Um, so they're guys that we have to analyse and and see what lengths they're bowling. Um, it's ident identical to the other lengths that the other guys have bowled in the past and have had success. So, as a batsman, you've got to try and work out and identify how to put them off their lengths in England. Um, and by the looks of it, for the next sort of 12, 13 days, the sun's supposed to come out. So, I'm uh, looking forward to batting in the sun for once. Is it easy to? What happened in 19, like individually, when it comes to like Brody, or I guess you know, just about in general over here? Like, is it, is it take one innings, one good innings, and then it's sort of that's all irrelevant, does it matter? Like, or, or does it linger in your mind a bit? Do I avoid that series? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah look, for, for us, you just it's part and parcel of the game. Um, if people are bowling well, and I look back and look at the dismissals and, and look at both opening pairs, it was a difficult time to bat. Um, you know, I looked at the 2018 Duke ball compared to the 223 ball. It's completely different as well. So, you know, it was a higher pronounced seam back then. Um, they wanted to use those balls as well. They had that choice. Uh, and it was hard to tackle. Um, you know, and then once you got in, the ball still moved around for, for the 80 overs. So it was difficult. Um, there was nothing to do with any of my technique or anything like that. If I am critical of myself, it was probably going away from my game plan, which is looking to score. So, you know, I was... I was listening to some other other voices, which, um, you know, from my perspective, it probably didn't suit my game. So I gave that a chance. 
Um, I felt like I batted my best at Leeds, and that was the way that I normally played. So, you know, if you can put the bowlers off their line and lengths and put pressure on them, that's how you, you score runs, and that's when I'm at my best. David, you've got a pretty well honed preparation for test cricket over a decade. How do you know in the nets when your things are coming good? Is it footwork? Is it a particular shot that you hit well that you know you're, you're in, on the way? Yeah, look, some you know, you guys are sometimes our biggest critics, um, and you guys can see that as well. Um, you know, like you, I remember I think it was 2013. I I was in the nets and I was copying it left, right, and centre um, in the media about you know getting bowled by Mitchell Stark and um, all the other guys and wasn't in form in the nets. And I found that a bit um, yeah, a bit bizarre because. I'm probably one of the worst netters going around. Um, but here, I've actually been superb in terms of my feet have been moving, my energy's been moving, I've been up and about. And I've always said that I feel like I've come off um, the IPL and in that format, you have to look to score. And I think that's held me in good stead for this preparation. Um, I'm still looking to score. I think sometimes when I've led from, say, Red Ball um, State Cricket into a Test Match Series, I've gone out and looked to survive and sort of changed my characteristics of my batting. So I think that's held me in good stead at the moment. Um, and I've been practicing probably better than I ever have in the nets. So do you throttle that back in the next couple of days before the test? Because you don't like to hit a lot of balls. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, probably on the f so fifth, I think we have another sort of main main day. I'll taper off there and I'll pro I won't train on the sixth. Um, I'll do all my bulk of my work just beforehand and then, and then relax. In terms of making the shift out of IPL to here, is that just old news for you now? You've done it so many years. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of playing all three forms. Like, you know, for the for the game style that I play, um, it helps me more when I go from white ball cricket to red ball because I'm in that mode of looking to score. And you know, I'm I'm happy to nick off playing cover drive um, rather than front foot defence and you know getting bowled or or nicked off from there. So you know, I think that's going to help my game, um, and hopefully I can I can do that in this um, World Test Championship final. When you started your career, everyone was bowling over the wicket to you. Now everyone bowls around the wicket. How much do you have to change your technique and, and mindset when you're facing those kinds of bowls? Because it'll be India will do it and then England will do it as well. Yeah, look, it's only conducive if the wicket suits as well. I, you know, from, from our point of view, talking to a lot of the right-handers, obviously face right-arm bowlers. You've got to get into positions where you allow the ball to beat you on the outside. Um, you know, if if I get beaten on the outside of my bat and my off stump gets wrist then you're not in the right position. So I've worked hard on that over the years to try and do that. Um, and I think it's only happened once since that's happened. Um, and you're going to get a ball that sort of angles down towards leg and can swing away. So if that happens, so be it. But I tried to do that last time I was here, but I was in a defensive mode. And when, you, when you're thinking about where's my off stump, you know, if I play in this, I'm not actually looking to hit that through covers. Where if I hit that through covers, so be it if I nick off, then I'm happy with that. So, yeah, it's it's it, it, it has changed a lot since then as well because they never used to do it back in the day. Um, you know, so we always questioned some of the ex-left-handers in the day about <laughs> about that. Um, no more wide cut shots. You've got to actually create the room and space. And I think you see one Travis Head do that a lot. Um, I think Duckett did a lot um, the other day as well. So, you know, that's, that's the, the blessing of a left-hander. We can try and create that room as well. So hopefully I can do that. Is that going to be approached in the summer then, just whether it goes well or not, constantly look to score? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I, You know, I think the, the mindset is, I think you look at, you know, Brendan McCallum. Like, I know the way that he batted when he played, it was a little bit different to what we did. But, you know, as soon as one or two balls were in a spot, he would just try and come down the wicket and, you know, put them off it. And I think that's a different approach, but that was his approach. Um, you know, so for, from an opening batter's perspective, it's going to be challenging with the, with the new ball to do that, but you have to be brave. Uh, and I think in these conditions with world-class bowlers, you can't allow them to settle and you can't allow them to put the ball in that one spot. Um, so you're going to have to make some brave decisions and, and be content with getting out, um, you know, as I said, like if it's a cover drive or whatnot. I've got to ask you what your thoughts on Rod's comments then about the last series. Oh, the void comments? Oh, look, at the end of the day, you know, he, he's entitled to that opinion. Um, we all played through COVID. We all had the same conditions. Um, I think he said something about no one played a test match away, but in the day we still spent, you know, close to 90, 100 days away from our home bed. Um, you know, he might get a little bit homesick and he can't cope with playing under those circumstances. But we've all played Ashes series away. It's the same, irrelevant of what you got. You know, you, you had a golf course there. That's what they do. They like playing golf. They had a great resort. Um, we had the same facilities. So, yeah, look, that's his opinion. Um, for me, it's you know, I don't worry about that stuff. So.
Is this your final test series or do you, play, do you plan to play Australia test summer? My final test series? Yeah. Well, it's depending on what you guys write and if the selectors pick me. Um, you've got to score runs. Um, I've always said that the World Cup would probably be my final game. Um, but I think, you know, I probably owe it to myself and my family. Um, you know, if I can score runs here, continue to play back in Australia, um, I can definitely say I won't be playing that West Indies series. So I think if I get through this and, and I can make the Pakistan series, I'll definitely uh, finish up then. The setup of this summer, it's just different. Six tests in such a short space of time. Is it daunting? Is it exciting? Like, how do you look at it at this point where you're about to jump in? Going back 12 months, it looked, yeah, it looked very daunting. Um, you know, whether or not you're going to play this test match before the series, given that there's a World Cup as well, um, we've got South Africa as well. And then you got cricket on the back end of the World Cup in India. So leading into a, a home summer, like it's going to be exhausting. Um, and I think the boys, you know, rightfully so, you know, the selectors have, probably have been speaking to them about, you know, the series is that we pr are priding ourselves on. Obviously, this championship, the Ashes and the World Cup's the big one. So for us, we've got to be up and about. Um, senior players, we have to put our hands up and, and, you know, take wickets and score a lot of runs for us to be... Um, on top so if we can manage that and do that I think whatever the future um, throws at the team um, we'll be able to handle. Just, um, in terms of identifying that Pakistan series as, as maybe an end point in test cricket does that um, help you mentally does it um, you know now that you might have a, an end date that yeah does that change things? Uh, it can but like for me I've always played every game pretty much as it's my last that's how I've always played that's my my style of cricket um, I enjoy being around the guys um, I love being part of the team and and try and be that ball of energy in the group. So, um, yeah, I'll just keep working, you know, working as hard as I can to, to get to there. Um, as I said, it starts this, this test match against um, India, and I'm really looking forward to that challenge. Um, and then, obviously, the challenge that presents itself against England. Dave, just to clarify there, I think I've heard you say before that next year's T20 World Cup was potentially your exit point from T20 cricket. So does that suggest that after this summer, like, that's not an option anymore for now? Like, you're looking at ODI as your end of white ball cricket? and then this summer is it for Test Cricket? Look, I, I want to play that 2024 World Cup. Um, it is something that is on the back end of my mind. But we've got a lot of cricket um, before that, and then I think it stops from February. So for me, to, then I have to play, obviously, IPL, some of the other franchise leagues, um, and then get into that rhythm to play in that. I think it's in June. So yeah. there will be a bit of cricket around to play. Um, who knows? I might go back and probably play a shield game for New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might have to finish up. Okay. All good. All good? No worries. Enjoy. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.